All right, let's see how to do all this in R. Um, I'm using the PC version of R. No reason I do, other than the fact that I have a PC. At this point, I assume if you have a Mac and you want to use R, you know how to do it. Big difference is I'm going to say Control R to run, and you're going to do Command Enter. So first thing is import the data. Um, the dependent variable is going to be the log of the count of bacteria. Um, I'm going to use the C function, which means combine or collect. And so it takes everything in the parentheses and collects them into a single vector. Inside the parentheses, I'm just going to put in the, the log of the counts of bacteria. Assuming that I know. Assuming I can. I have a lot of trouble with typing. Okay, so there's our dependent variable. Our independent variable is the packaging type. Again, we're going to collect it. Instead of actually doing all the writing out, I'm just going to call plastic.a and b for vacuum, c for CO2, and d for mixed gases. I'm going to run that. Oh my goodness, I have an error. If the A were in quotation marks, R would recognize that as the letter A. Since it's not in quotation marks, R is uh, looking at A as being a variable. Which is fine, because now I can define A as a variable as plastic wrap. I can define B as vacuum. I can define C as CO2. And I can define D as mixed. I run those four lines, package, not a problem. No errors. Now to make sure I've got everything lined up correctly, I can use a cbind function. What the cbind function does is it binds two or more variables um, in terms of columns. So the C is for column. So I can look at package and L count and get this as an output. Notice 12 is the number of data points. So first plastic wrap 7.66, second is 6.98, third is 7.80. Check through all your data. Always make sure the data that's in there is correct. Biggest source of error is not having the data in there correctly. Next thing I would like to do is to look at the data. So I'm going to use the function box plot to create a box plot. It's going to be here, we're going to give it a formula. Formulas are always of the form independent variable tilde, I'm sorry, of the form dependent variable tilde independent variable. So there's our box plot. Just by looking at the box plot, it looks like there's not much difference between CO2 and plastic wrap. It looks like mixed gases are very different from everything else, and it looks like vacuum is very different from everything else. It looks like mixed gases has the lowest. So we got an idea already of what, what we're going to expect to see. Now we just have to determine if what our eyes are telling us is reality. So we're going to do analysis of variance. Remember the null hypothesis for analysis of variance is that the average in each of the four groups is equal. And that would be mu, the population average, not the sample average. If you would like to see the sample average, we can use the function aggregate. It's what you are, it's a dependent variable first. Then by equal list of package, second. And then function, I want to see the mean. That tells me that the sample mean for CO2 is 7.26. The sample mean for mixed gases is 3.36. The sample mean for plastic wrap is 7.48. And the sample mean for vacuum is 5.50. Notice that it got grouped in alphabetical order. It's going to be kind of important. If you want to look at the variances, just change mean for variances. And you'll see that the variance of the CO2 is 0.0379, the variance, and again, these are sample variances, 0.1575, etc. So that's a quick way of 
applying some function, mean is usually what's used, to a variable uh, and grouping it in certain ways. So grouping variable goes there. But ANOVA is all about drawing conclusions about the population, not about the pat and not about the sample itself. The function is AOV, and it takes a formula. Boom. Gives us the sum of squares and the degrees of freedom. Package is the independent variable. In the book, we call that between instead of package. It also gives us the residuals. In the book, they call that within, or they'll call it error. I'll also call it error. R calls it residuals. Thus, this doesn't give us the p value, and it doesn't give us the f value, although we could calculate the f value with no problem. It doesn't give us a lot of other things. Um, but there is a lot of information stored in that, that function right there. To get to a lot of it, you just have to call it some sort of variable. Since this is the first model in this analysis, I'm going to call it mod1 run. Notice nothing's printed out over here. And then I'm just going to do a summary of mod1. Now we get something that looks a lot more like the analysis of variance table. Again, packages the same as between, residuals is the same as within, degrees of freedom for packages is number of groups minus one, four minus one is three, degrees of freedom for residuals is the sample size minus the number of groups, 12 minus four is eight. There's the sums of squares, there's the mean squares, which is just the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. There's the f value, which is just the ratio of the mean squared between to the mean squared within. And there's the associated p-value. That was pretty fast. This just, since p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that at least one average is different from the others. Now, which average is different? Yeah, I'm going to have to wait until later to figure that out when we start talking about post hoc analysis. And according to this, that's uh, video three. Hopefully, I keep to that schedule. I will tell you this um, there's another summary function. It's summary.lm. Run summary.lm, LM stands for linear model, by the way. And you get a much more extensive uh, table. This is, in other contexts, called the regression table. So the intercept, in this case, notice that one of the four levels is missing. It's the CO2 level, because the C in CO2 is the least in the alphabetical order. So this intercept, the 7.26, is the estimated average, estimated mu, for CO2 group in terms of the log number of bacteria. This negative 3.9 is the estimated effect difference between mixed gases and CO2. This 0.22 is the estimated effect difference between plastic wrap and CO2. And this negative 1.76 is the estimated differential between vacuum and CO2. So that first one is mu for CO2 and the other three are tau compared with the CO2. These T statistics and P values are all for testing if the estimate is zero. So this first one, if P value is less than alpha, we know that the estimates that the mu for CO2 is not zero. This 6.45 times 10 to negative 7 is less than alpha, therefore tau for mixed gases minus tau for CO2 is not zero. This 0.451 is greater than alpha, therefore it's entirely possible that tau for plastic wrap minus tau for CO2 is indeed zero. It's reasonable. There is no detected difference between CO2 and plastic wrap 
in terms of average number, uh, average number of bacteria logged. Log average number of bacteria. Ugh. Should choose an easier um, example. And that negative 1.76 is the p value is less than alpha, therefore this is not zero. Tau sub vacuum minus tau sub CO2, we have a lot of evidence that it's not zero. Now we can also get confidence intervals for each of those. Ninety-five percent confident that the mean for CO2 is between 6.8 and 7.7. We're ninety-five percent confident that the uh, tau mixed gases minus tau CO2 is between negative 4.5 and negative 3.3. 95% confident that tau plastic wrap minus tau CO2 is between negative 4.2, I'm sorry, negative 0.42 and negative 8.86. And vac tau vacuum minus tau CO2 is between negative 2.4 and negative 1.1. And all of that agrees with what we found here. Mixed gases is the lowest. Well, we can't really tell that from this because these are measurements essentially of mu and these three are measurements of tau differences. So how can we get estimates of mu when we don't have those? Well, here's one way of doing it. Don't get into the habit of doing this though. Let's create a second model. It's AOB, L count, squiggle package. So far no differences but add in plus zero. Adding in the plus zero forces the intercept to be zero. If the intercept is forced to be zero, then you're going to get four rows that are outputted. One from mu CO2, one from mu mixed gases, one from mu plastic wrap, and one from mu vacuum. get confidence intervals on those. So we're 95% confident that mu CO2 is between 6.8 and 7.7, .7. that mu mixed gases is between 2.9 and 3.8, that mu plastic wrap is between 7.0 and 7.9, and mu vacuum is between 5.0 and 5.9. Don't get into the habit of doing this. Because once we move beyond this simple case of one-way analysis of variance, you're not going to be able to do this. Get in the habit of doing this and doing post hoc analysis, which will be uh, video number three. So I, I, I'm done. This is all there is to video one for R. And in these short lines, we replicated everything I did on the board. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care.